Did you know that most motorcycle accidents are likely to happen in a very short distance away from home? Is it any coincidence that riders are more likely to wear less protective gear if they're only riding a short distance away from home? Call me paranoid, but personally, I don't gear down even when I'm just riding around the corner or even at low speeds. So as long as I'm taking my bike out of the driveway, even for a short ride, I'm gearing up. Hey, how's it going people? Brown Brady here. It's good to be back and thank you for tuning into my channel. And in this episode, I'm going to walk you through my top five must-have riding gear, which I believe should be the minimum requirement for new and returning riders. This is my Dot and Snell certified helmet. At first, I didn't really like it because I thought it was too big for me and it also made me look like a bobblehead. But after that, I thought it was okay. There were some features that I liked about this, such as the removable visor and the air vents. I recommend that you buy helmets in brand new condition because you never know if they've been involved in an accident before. So I'll leave out the helmet in this list because it's a legal requirement anyway. And so without further ado, here are my top five must-have riding gear that I wear. And by the way, I will add links in the description for similar products. Number five, knee and shin guards. Sometimes debris on the road make their way past the fairings and hit my shin. And this is why I wear knee and shin guards. These ones are not made specifically for motorcycle riding, but if they're rated to take hits from a hockey puck, they can stop pebbles on the road. There are also more expensive ones that are lighter and allow for better circulation. But I must admit though, I no longer wear these as often. Number four, riding pants. Some riding schools are stricter than the government when it comes to riding gear, and they'll require that you also have additional safety gear such as riding pants. And this mentality was what I took home with me after my riding lessons ended. These riding pants have Kevlar lining in the knees, hips, and Kevlar is the same material used in bulletproof vests. I'm not saying this is bulletproof, but it's meant to reduce the road rash. They're also large enough to fit over my shin protection. Number three, riding shoes. You know, I find it very uncomfortable riding in these, especially when I'm operating the shifter. So the absolute minimum are a pair of sneakers. But I do have two pairs of riding shoes. I have these, uh, basketball style high tops, and these black leather boots. I do prefer these ones better, but I alternate between the two. Both of them will protect my ankle in case of a slide, and they are also oil resistant. So it's also important to remember to tie them tightly so that they don't get caught in the chain and so that they don't fly out of your feet just when you need them the most. Number two, riding jacket. You know, I see a lot of new riders shopping for their motorcycle ahead of buying their safety gear, and there's nothing wrong with that. I get it, because choosing a motorcycle is a lot more exciting than shopping for riding pants. However, I admit, shopping for a riding jacket comes in a close second. I think you should make shopping for riding gear equally important though. My favorite riding jacket is this insulated black leather jacket. It's not an official riding jacket and it's good enough to protect me from abrasion. And this is my textile riding jacket, which was recommended to me by the sales rep at the local motorcycle shop. It has CE armor to protect my back and my spine and elbows as well. And it has a removable inner lining for extra airflow when riding in hot weather. And it also has some reflective material for higher visibility. And finally, number one, riding gloves. Riding gloves will save your palms in case of a wipeout because you will instinctively reach for the ground with your hands before impact. They'll also protect your knuckles from debris when riding at high speeds. I have two pairs of these and I prefer these full leather ones. Some gloves have hard plastic around the knuckles. 
and sliders along the palms. But when you can afford gauntlet style gloves, you should upgrade to those because they'll protect your wrists as well. I do have some honorable mentions and these are optional gear that I sometimes wear. These are hip and tailbone pads. This is made of stretchable, breathable material and worn under my riding pants. The hips are protected by CE material and soft padding for my tailbone. And the crotch area is also protected for extra comfort. This is my body armor, which I sometimes wear. And this particular model is pretty popular in eBay. And sometimes I do wear this when I'm wearing my leather jacket. Earplugs. I ordered 200 pairs of these disposable earplugs and that'll last me many seasons. Each one can be reused until they're dirty, then I just toss them out. These are meant to protect me from long-term hearing damage caused by wind noise. But if your helmet is already quiet, then you don't need these. If you're wondering how much time it takes me to gear up, typically about 10 minutes to put it on and another 10 minutes to take it off. So if I wanna ride my bike to work, it's gonna cost me about 20 minutes. And if you ask me, I think the 20 minutes invested is worth it. Guys, I'm not saying that wearing gear will make you immune to injury or death, so I hope that you don't develop this sense of false security and ride like an ass <laughs> Injury or death is a tax on smart riders who do stupid things. No amount of gear will save you from that. And I'm not in the business of changing people, but if I was, I'll make you wear your helmet no matter how close your destination is. Anyway guys, girls, or whatever you identify as, let me know in the comments section if you agree with my list. Would this be your minimum riding gear? And if you found this episode to be helpful, please let me know by hitting that like button. Or better yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. As always, ride safe and thanks for watching. You look like a bobblehead.